Greetings. I am so happy to be able to greet you uh, for this wonderful, wonderful conference. I'm Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee, and I serve as the co-chair and founder of the Congressional Children's Caucus. I represent the 18th Congressional District in Houston, Texas, and I'm so disappointed that I'm not able to be at my alma mater, but to be with you on this very important occasion because of pending business in my congressional district. For that reason, and only for that reason, I am not able to be with you over these two days for this exciting conference at the Yale Center for Dyslexia and Creativity. This is a special time to launch the Multicultural Dyslexia Awareness Initiative, of which I'm enormously excited about and believe that it is a most important initiative and you have my full commitment. Dyslexia and Literacy, the title of this effort, a civil rights issue for our time, how important a statement and commitment and how true. I thank my dear friend, Dr. Keith McGee, for inviting me and I was so privileged to be able to meet as well our president-elect, Dr. Peter Solovey, uh, who of course now will ascend to the presidency of Yale University and will be one of the leaders on this issue. Drs. Bennett and Sally Shaywith, it was a pleasure to see you in Washington, and I'm looking forward to carrying this message forward, working with our members of Congress and the Congressional Caucus on Dyslexia. I am, of course, very much uh, appreciative of you being the co-founders of the Yale Center for Dyslexia and Creativity, and to Karen Pritzer, again, seeing you and understanding the purpose of the Seedlands Foundation and the commitment you have made uh, to this very important issue, to those who have dyslexia and yourself and others, knowing uh, that uh, you have lived uh, through and with uh, dyslexia and are reaching out to many others, and particularly those in the multicultural community and, of course, the African-American community. Let me thank my friend and colleague, Congressman Bill Cassidy, who was co-chair of the Bipartisan Dyslexia Caucus and, of course, his co-chair from California, Damon John, dyslexic author, Pulitzer Prize nominee, uh, Victor uh, Valacinor, producer and social activist, uh, Gina Belafonte, uh, and of course, all of those who are winning awards today, Dr. Maggie Adderin, uh, Pocock, British space scientist, and my dear, dear, dear friend and hero, civil rights activist and entertainer, the great, great Harry Belafonte, who will be there this evening and be there tomorrow and continue to serve uh, as he has always done. Uh, this great center uh, and the MDAI, uh, uh, I think, uh, knows and believes that dyslexia is truly a civil rights issue of our time. I believe that. I'm committed to that. It is the most common learning disability with approximately one out of every five people struggling with dyslexia. While 20% of the population is dyslexic, many remain undiagnosed. I've seen it in my schools, in the school districts. I've seen it with families. I've seen it throughout my community. I know and understand by way of those who've come to our office and asked about the unfair treatment in schools. I have seen that this is a civil rights issue. Untreated and struggling with the impact of their dyslexia many times alone. That's why this conference is so very important. It crosses racial, ethnic, and social economic lines, and with proper instruction and accommodations, I know and have seen that it can be remediated. However, the diagnosis and treatment of dyslexia remains elusive in public schools and other schools, and even more so in urban school populations comprising of African Americans and Latino communities. Children who cannot read or are marginalized and left to struggle and ultimately risk failing completely falling through the, craps, uh, through the cracks, dropping out of school and facing dismal futures. With proper identification intervention, this is preventable. Sometimes those with dyslexia can be victims of bullying. As a founder and co-chair of the House Congressional Children's Caucus, I've worked long years uh, to find and to address issues like obesity, like nutrition, and certainly like bullying. And I look at it in the expansive nature of not just covering schoolyard bullying, but all aspects of it, which would include children who may be dyslexic, children don't understand, schools don't understand, and that child, again, is marginalized. 
Bullying is a massive issue in our nation's schools, and I've introduced legislation uh, to be able to fight against that, to ask for best practices and intervention. The National Center for Educational Studies reports show that 14% of 12 to 18-year-olds surveyed report being victims of direct or indirect bullying. One out of four kids is bullied. It's time for us to come to a conclusive solution to America's bullying crisis. And as I indicated, I introduced H.R. 6019, the Juvenile Accountability Block Grants Reauthorization and Bullying Prevention and Intervention Act. What I believe is that coming together, working on this multicultural effort to reach out to those who are suffering with dyslexia, uh, dyslexia on their own and to be able to confront other side issues such as bullying brings us all together. So you can see why I'm excited about this conference, excited about some of the sessions that you're holding, uh, particularly those who confront it and where you acknowledge that I'm dyslexic and the good news is that I'm here to tell you how I succeeded. I'm delighted that there will be many participating in that. Let me again thank you for even thinking of inviting me to this very special conference and to say that everyone who is there is special. You're doing something for America. You're doing something for our children. You're doing something uh, to ring the clarion call that communities that heretofore have not been approached and reached out to are now going to get the call to address these issues with our children. America's children, all of our children, you are to be commended and the honorees are to be saluted and the special keynote speaker is to be recognized and admired. Thank you all so very much. And the leaders of this great conference, I want you to know that we will work together. God bless all of you and God bless the United States of America and especially for your presence. God bless the initiative for all of us to be better in this nation. Thank you so very much.